Hello and welcome. This is my wife, Mary, and I'm Ed, and we are Branch Davidian Seventh-day Adventists. We're excited you're joining us today. We present or expound on a principle or belief related to the SDA Sabbath School Quarterly each week. The Sabbath School study this quarter is entitled, The Least of These. This week's lesson is on the meaning of the Sabbath. Tuesday's lesson is entitled, A Day of Equality, and discusses the Fourth Commandment's extensive description of why we are to remember the Sabbath, how we are to remember the Sabbath, and who should be involved in remembering the Sabbath. The lesson goes on to point out the Fourth Commandment's emphasis on the importance of treating all of God's creatures equally. God mandates rest for both men and women, sons and daughters, servants and masters, Israelites and foreigners, humans and beasts on the seventh day. Let's take a look at this in Exodus. Exodus 20, verses 2, 8, and 10 say, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. Certainly, Sabbath included the interests of the underprivileged and underrepresented. All of God's creatures were to benefit from the Sabbath alike. The Apostle Paul taught the truth of equality in his days. In Galatians 3.28, he tells us, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Most people living today do not realize how profound these statements and principles were back in their day. Many of us have Moses, Jesus, and Paul to thank for the freedoms of equality and blessings of dignity we enjoy today. These ideas for equality and dignity were revolutionary in their day. Unfortunately, we're still not out of the woods in regard to equality for all God's creatures as prescribed in the fourth commandment. Today we are going to focus on one aspect of the Sabbath prescription for equality that is often overlooked by most people today. That is the inclusion of the animals as one of the creatures that deserves rest, dignity, and equality right alongside humans. So animals are people too? Well, I think it's more accurate to say that people are animals too. But many cultures eat animals. Surely they can't be considered equal in God's eyes. Well, although Adventists are quintessentially vegetarians for health reasons, there are other reasons for the inspired message of vegetarianism that many are unaware of. At least I was not aware of all these things Ellen White said in regard to vegetarianism until it was pointed out to me. Well, what did she say? In the Ministry of Healing, page 315 through 317, she said, The moral evils of a flesh diet are not less marked than are the physical ills. Flesh food is injurious to health, and whatever affects the body has a corresponding effect on the mind and the soul. Think of the cruelty to animals that meat eating involves and its effect on those who inflict and those who behold it. How it destroys the tenderness with which we should regard these creatures of God. Wow, she equates eating meat with cruelty to animals. She continues, The intelligence displayed by many dumb animals approaches so closely to human intelligence that it is a mystery. The animals see and hear and love and fear and suffer. They use their organs far more faithfully than many human beings use theirs. They manifest sympathy and tenderness toward their companions in suffering. Many animals show an affection for those who have charge of them, far superior to the affection shown by some of the human race. They form attachments for man which are not broken without great suffering to them. Here, Ellen White shows us how animals are not so different from us. By dumb, she is referring to their lack of language, not their intelligence, because she actually says animal intelligence closely approaches the human animal in intelligence. Animals see and hear and love and fear and suffer just like we do. Did you know that the long-term memory of elephants far surpasses the long-term memory of humans and that the short-term memory of chimpanzees far surpasses the short-term memory of humans? Wow, well that's interesting. Ellen White continues, what man with a human heart who has ever cared for domestic animals could look into their eyes so full of confidence and affection and willingly give them over to the butcher's knife? How could he devour their flesh as a sweet morsel? In all cases, educate the conscience, enlist the will, supply good, wholesome food, and the change will be readily made, and the demand for flesh will soon cease. Notice here she admonishes us to engage our conscience in regard to what we eat. While the care for our health is a moral issue, she shows us that it is unconscionable to butcher an animal. Killing and eating animals is plain immoral. 
She goes on, is it not time that all should aim to dispense with flesh foods? How can those who are seeking to become pure, refined, and holy, that they may have the companionship of heavenly angels, continue to use as food anything that has so harmful an effect on soul and body? How can they take the life of God's creatures that they may consume the flesh as a luxury? Let them rather return to the wholesome and delicious food given to man in the beginning, and themselves practice and teach their children to practice mercy towards the dumb creatures that God has made and has placed under our dominion. God's creatures, all of them, are to be treated with dignity and equality. We know that God gave the Israelites manna in the wilderness, not meat, and the fruit of the garden in Eden was for food, not the animals. We must prepare for entrance into the kingdom of God now. This is a key component to setting our minds for righteousness. Isaiah 11 tells us about this coming kingdom. It says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. With righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, the calf and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, who shall stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him, and his resting place shall be glorious." Here we can see a resting place promised before the second coming of Christ, because as verse 11 tells us, the Gentiles will seek him at this time. Of course, after Christ visibly returns to the earth, there will be no more Gentiles. But notice here, in this promised kingdom, the carnivorous animals will be grazing like the cow and eating straw like the ox. For shame that a bear or a lion would go on into the kingdom as a vegetarian before we would. Ellen White said in Signs of the Times, God who created man made the animals also. Many do not think that their cruelty will ever be known because the poor dumb beasts cannot reveal it. But could the eyes of these men be opened as were the eyes of Balaam, they would see an angel of God standing as a witness to testify against them in the courts above. A record goes up to heaven and a day is coming when judgment will be pronounced against men who make themselves demons by their dealings with God's creatures. If animals could speak, what deeds of horror would be revealed? Animals have a kind of dignity and self-respect akin to that possessed by human beings. If abused under the influence of blind passion, their spirits will become crushed, and they will be nervous, irritable, and ungovernable. There were beasts in Eden, and there will be beasts in the earth made new. Unless the men who have indulged in cruelty towards God's creatures here overcome that disposition and become like Jesus, kind and merciful, they will never share in the inheritance of the righteous. They would, if there, exercise the same spirit that had not been overcome here. All disposition to cause pain to our fellow men or to the brute creation is satanic. There will be beasts in the earth made new. She succinctly states that those who cause pain to our fellow earthlings, the brute animals, will not be privileged with its citizenship. This includes eating them. Ellen says it is satanic. I know this may be a new teaching for some of us, even those who have been Adventists for many years. As you can see, although it may be new to us, it is an old teaching. Sometimes these principles of truth can be difficult to settle into at first, but the more you internalize the truth intellectually, the easier it will be to live in love. We suggest watching documentaries on the cruelties of the meat, entertainment, and research industries that exploit animals and ask yourself how you would feel if you were treated as though you do not see and hear and love and fear and suffer. In God's grace, we can repent and change our ways. Even if we are vegetarians, are we vegetarians for the right reason? Are we vegetarians just for the purpose of bettering our own health? Or is it for the love, concern, and care of the entire animal kingdom, of which we are a responsible part? It amazes me to see, even now, how wild animals will seek out and even long for the love and affection of humans when they have reason to trust us. And what kind of human wouldn't long for that, too? Well, vegetarianism and the realization of the equal rights of animals is a necessary step towards ushering in the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thank you for staying with us through the entire video. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are and, just as important, who we are not. Please join us each week as we will continue to offer new and interesting insights 
for your Sabbath School studies. God bless. Many blessings.